Jonathan Alcorn is an award-winning Los Angeles-based editorial and commercial photographer whose career has spanned everything from covering the 1994 LA earthquake to working with dementia patients. Alcorn is a Samsung image logger. Please give a warm round of applause for Jonathan Alcorn. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to PIX 2015. I'm Jonathan Alcorn. I'm an editorial and news photographer based in Los Angeles, California. And I began my career in 1988 at the Pasadena Star News newspaper. And back then, we shot all black and white photos. And we had to, as, after we shot our assignment, we would rush back to the newspaper and Sorry, this is not clicking. We would rush back to the newspaper and develop the film, make a print, and oftentimes it would be at deadline, so the editor of that page would come back into the dark room and measure the photo for the layout size in the newspaper. And then the next morning, you would see the newspaper. And that's when the first time you would see the photo, probably 12 hours after I took it, or. Eight to, eight to 12 hours after I took it. Um, this is not working. There we go, that's me, <laughs> before I shaved. And um, so I'm a Samsung in image logger. I also work with Reuters uh, and Getty Images and New York Times, many newspapers, publications around the world. Okay, um, this was in 1991. That's Bo Jackson on his very last play in the NFL. He broke his hip on that play. And that was kind of the end of the black and white era for me. Um, we, the newspaper went to color right after that. And we started shooting color film. And that's when I first started working with computers as a photojournalist because we started scanning our images in. <coughs> And then we would convert them to black and white, but we shot everything on color, and that was kind of revolutionary at that time. I had to use a handheld light meter often because I was shooting color slide film, which is no latitude. You had to get the exposure right. So I'd, you'd see us all out there with, with light meters constantly. Um, let me go back here. This was one of my first color pictures that ran in the newspaper. It was a wash rescue. Uh, we had a big torrential downpour, and the, the wash filled up with water. It's usually dry. That guy was on a boogie board trying to ride the waves, and he got completely hurt, lost his boogie board. And they kept trying to save him, and he would slip away. And it was pouring rain. I shot that on, I think, 1600 ISO film which was kind of new at that time. Before that, we were pretty limited. 1,600, maybe 3,200 is about as high as you could go. The grain would just get too crazy. Um, and that was in 1994, the Northridge earthquake in Los Angeles. It was a really crazy morning, um, no communications. I just kind of went out and started shooting all over the area in the San Gabriel Valley. I'm sorry, San Fernando Valley. And the next day, they used my photo on the front page, and that photo went all over the world. And the edition of the Northridge Earthquake paper won the Pulitzer Prize. And it was really uh, an awesome pleasure and privilege to be part of a Pulitzer Prize edition like that. It's definitely a career highlight. I shot that on color slide film. That's blow up. Okay, so I started shooting full-time digital cameras uh, early 2000s. This was around 2006, and you can see the green. That was about maybe 800 ISO, and you can definitely see back then the sensors weren't anything like they are now, but at that time, this was probably as good as it could be. 
this I shot last year, and you can see the detail and the shadows and everything has come so far. The grain is so much better. So the, the cameras are a lot better now. These, these new digital cameras, like this NX500 that I use quite a bit, have changed everything. Um, one of my favorite things to do is we call it chimping. So I'll take the shot. And this, this camera is awesome. It has, it has the swiveling display in the back. And I shot that like this. Just good on an old man's back. I don't have to go on the ground like I used to and get soaking wet. Um, and by the way, this camera, the NX500, you will be able to ditch the DSLR tomorrow at the Samsung booth. And you will get trade in a DSLR with a battery and a charger. And you can get a brand new NX500, which I use all the time. And my photos using it are published all the time. <clears throat> That's Kanye West, and this was a real challenge. The screen in the back was so bright you couldn't even see him. Another, another. If I had been shooting film, I would have been guessing, bracketing like crazy, and hope I would get a shot. By having the screens on these digital cameras, I could look exactly what I was getting, make my adjustments, and boom, I was able to pull something I couldn't even see him. And I looked down, I'm like, oh my god, I got a good shot. I was so relieved, because I had like two minutes to shoot. They, they kicked me out. And I was like, literally, they're pulling me away, and I'm going, OK, try as I'm walking out. Because two minutes is not enough. But that's how it goes. OK. Sometimes we do portraits of celebrities. And one of the great things also with that is we used to have to do a Polaroid wait a couple minutes, show it to them so they could approve the lighting. Now it just takes a second, because you have maybe five minutes with these people. So you show them what you have, they feel comfortable, and boom, that happened. And I think I spent maybe four minutes with her. And I, we ran three different photos. So it has to be really quick. So being the capability to see what you're shooting and make adjustments on the fly, to me, is one of the greatest things about digital because you can't go back. You gotta get the shot when you're there. This was an uh, oil spill up in Santa Barbara recently. And I shot that photo, and I went directly, pulled up my, my phone, connected to my camera. You just, I'll show you actually. You just bump the, you just bump the phone to the camera immediately connects, I transferred over the image, sent it from basically where I was standing, I sent the image to my editor, and within 10 minutes that photo was on websites all over the world. It's, it's like completely different than how it used to be for me. But before I would shoot, and if I did a magazine assignment, I would shoot film, ship it to New York, never get to see any of the images, and boy, those were nervous nights waiting to, for the morning to see if they were gonna call or not. And it's always good if they don't call. When you get a call, you know, uh-oh, I messed up. So I didn't get a call that day. <laughs> and OK, moving along. Sorry, go back. Uh, the space shuttle, they brought it into LA. It's now on permanent display, but it was a big deal for us in Los Angeles. And that's kind of an iconic place in LA. So I waited all day to shoot for them to get to that spot because it was super crowded. Got there really early. And kind of when it got there, the light wasn't quite, it was still real daylight. And all the photographers shot and took off. I stayed and then the light started to change. Those are TV lights that make it look all crazy. And because they were doing a Nissan ad, I think. And the lighting on that one was you know, it came together, and when I sent that one in, it ended up being published like crazy everywhere because the lighting was, you know, a little different. And you, you want to get photos that are different because everybody was out there shooting pictures. I mean, everybody. And I'm competing now not only with other news photographers, but with just citizen journalists or anybody that has a camera can now be published. So it, I definitely want to... I'm really trying to get photos that are unique, especially when everyone's there, something different. 
I live in Venice Beach, and it's if you've ever been there, it's kind of a, like a bazaar. You have all kinds of different people. I love it. It's a great place to take photos. And uh, I don't know, I just really always liked that one. Um, so with news photography, you never know when news is going to break, and you have to shoot in some really tough conditions. And the the recent evolution in the cameras have made you, you I, I, can, I routinely shoot at 10,000 ISO at night. This one wasn't as high, but it's amazing to be able to shoot that high. It's opened up a whole new world for all of us. Um, I have an image here. That was, uh, let's see, was that? I think that's last December. They were protesting the Ferguson shooting and I followed these people and they went right out on the 110 freeway and it was pitch black. And I shot that at 10,000 ISO, 60th of a second. And um, I just would have never had that shot until the last few years. It would have been pretty much impossible. And in news photography, you don't want to use a flash very much unless you have to. So that is a photo that would have been impossible to really get even three, four years ago. A lot of our assignments are kind of boring. This was at E3, and they, you know, they were like, can you get a nice crowd shot? And I'm like, okay, well, everyone's just sitting there looking like zombies. But I saw that girl, and I turned in a static, boring photo there, but that pink turned it into something. So I'm always looking for, I look for the light to be different. I'm looking for different light sources, mixing light sources. I really like to push it and, and take risks. And that one ended up being a picture of the day, I think, on Wall Street Journal. Um, and we have him. <laughs> I, I shot, I actually shot some photos with this when I was on assignment. And, you know, we're all there with our giant cameras and everything. And I was just right in front, and I was literally doing this, getting shots of him. And I'm like, I hope he doesn't yell at me. I really don't want to be a part of a news story today. <laughs> but uh, he didn't yell at me, thank God, and we'll move on from him. <laughs> this is another example where these tilt screens are amazing. There was a big, huge flood in Los Angeles last year. That's at UCLA. And I was trying to make a, a, an interesting photo. And, I was walking around, trudging through water. I was getting soaking wet. And I saw the drain. And usually they'd be like, you can't go over there. But these, these firemen were cool. And I was literally right, right where the water was going down using the screen. And that photo to me is like, you, you know, you get the motion. It, we had a huge drought. It was just a really good storytelling photo. And I was able to to get something unique that before I would have just been holding it down and hoping I might have something cool, but I could actually frame it and shoot it and get out of there fast so they don't go, hey, get out of there. You know, I don't want to, I don't want anyone to know that I'm there when I'm shooting if possible. And it's great when you have small cameras. We used to have these giant cameras everywhere you went. People see you immediately. They, <coughs> excuse me. They know, it, they know you're there working. People are waving and posing. Can't ever turn those in. So I like to have these small cameras, not big giant motor drive, giant lenses. I want to fit into the scene, and it's so much easier these days. Um, I also carry a laptop with me often, and that gets pretty cumbersome. You have a backpack, laptop, you're running around, it's hot, you have all this gear. And the new connected cameras are amazing because I can email right to the editor. Fr I uh, connect it to the camera, like I said, send it to the editor. He does the caption for me. And I'm still there shooting. I'm not finding a Starbucks, getting a Wi-Fi connection. I'm literally connected, ready to go. Send the photo. Boom. It's, out, it's all over the world in a few minutes. Same thing here. 
uh, a friend of mine. We were trying to get an angle. It was a big, huge fire downtown LA. So we, we got into this apartment building, climbed up on the roof, and then we could see the actual destruction. And I sent that photo from the roof up top. Laptop was in the car. So that's an amazing, okay. Um, I'm very interested in Alzheimer's disease. My father passed away from it. So I spent about a year at this home for women with Alzheimer's. And um, I didn't want to be intrusive there, but after I spent a lot of time, no one noticed I was ever there. Um, it was just an amazing experience for me in healing, and I was able to, to give something back. We ended up doing a, we ended up doing a um, exhibition that all the proceeds went to the Alzheimer's Association, and it's just something near and dear to my heart. That was a Washington Post assignment on East Los Angeles. And I, I went up to these guys, I saw them, and as soon as I came up, they were like, no photos, no photos. I'm like, okay, I get it, I get it. I drove around the corner, waited about five minutes, pre-focused, turned the corner, <laughs> boom, one frame, and then they immediately all went like that, but then they started laughing. And it just came out perfect. I mean, you could see this guy getting up, like, I don't want to be in this photo. <laughs> but uh, I just love going out and finding photos like that. <laughs> this was um, Harrison Ford's plane. I think Chewbacca was in that back seat there, but I'm not sure. I, they were already gone when I got there, but I was one of the first photographers there. And um, I was able to get a couple photos out, like I said, on my phone immediately, transferring to the phone. And suddenly there was all these TV trucks and no one could get a signal. And so my photos were out. Everyone else was like, I can't get a signal. I can't get a signal. And I'm like, I already got four photos in. So but if you guys drive up the hill, you can get a signal. <laughs> and they're all like, I want to hear about these Samsung cameras again. So they're all asking me now. They want them for free, but I can't do that. You guys can tomorrow, though, at the ditch day. And that was uh, one of the places I ran. ran there. It's still running all the time. So I live in Venice Beach, and, and that's, my, that's my zen playground. After a rough day of crazy deadlines, I like to come home and go out to the beach. So I'm always out at the beach shooting. You can catch me there practically every day. And one of the good things about shooting in the same place every day is you get really, you know, it makes you look at things in a much different way. And I've been shooting Venice Beach, a, a certain area of it, for about three or four years now. And man, it's such a challenge, and I really recommend it to anyone to keep shooting a place you've shot to see it in a different way. It'll make your photos a lot better. <clears throat> David Beckham. That's not David Beckham. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just love to, to shoot. That's what I do. I do it for fun, and I do it for, for my career. And I'm always working. And photos like this, I'll shoot for fun, and, and I, I, I sell them. People buy these photos. It's, it's amazing. So I just think... With today's technology, I'm able to upload stuff, keyword it, and people are, are finding my photos. I always ask them, where'd you find me? They're, Google, or, you know, I'm like, wow, it's just so amazing. Before, I would like, it was so hard to get anyone that you had to contact people and beg them to give you jobs, and now I get calls out of the blue all the time because of the technology. People see my work, and it's, I don't have to send a portfolio and mail it and have a meeting. It's just, they can go right online, see my stuff. I can upload it to my website, boom. People buy it, put it on their walls. Breeders' Cup Sports was so hard to shoot when I first started. Manual focus when I was first working. Now autofocus, and it's just, it's, it, that is the biggest revolution to me is the autofocus. Because when I first started, you would hope you would have a few images in focus. Now I'm mad if I have one out of focus, so. <laughs> 
another one that I just was shooting for the fun of it. Uh, I hashtagged it, put it on Instagram. Architectural Magazine um, got a hold of me. That ran on a cover just from hashtagging and putting it on Instagram. Another Venice Beach shot. Low angle. You know the drill. And that's my good buddy there, but you know, I used the 10 millimeter lens on this one because Venice is kind of crazy and I wanted to give it that look, you know, and I think it worked really well with the reflections and um, and he also needed those immediately, so I just downloaded it onto a card. He sent it to his boss. It's a little coffee company, and they had that out on their Instagram that evening. The check took a couple months, but they had their photo right away. And I think, yeah, that's about it. But um, like I said, it's changed completely since I started black and white film. You didn't know what you had. You were hoping you had some good photos. You would rush back to the paper, develop the film. People are like, do you got it? Do you got it? And you're, you're rushing. And that was fun. But now to know what I'm getting, you get peace of mind. You're able to really take some chances because you nail a photo right away that you know is, is decent. And then you start taking chances. And to me, that is a whole new world. It's made me a much better photographer with the technology. And I'm looking forward to whatever comes next because it, I'm, I'm thinking anything's possible these days. Um, the thing is, is that it's, anything's possible for you guys now too. So it has to make me, I have to keep being better because they'll run citizen photos all the time because we're getting there late. People are there on the scene, they get the photo. And uh, I think that's all I have for, for this. Um, it's been a real pleasure to be out here and I hope you guys enjoy PIX 2015. Thank you very much.